We can win this war. We can win this war? OK, well, joining us from Orlando, Florida, is the man in that clip, Anthony Dream Johnson, who says he wants to abolish feminism and make women great again. No, but it also crazy. says, with a trademark, make women great again. For women, are always great. Women great. Right. Right. Make women great again. But they're going to do a three-day seminar for women led by all men. <laughs> in mansplaining news, a three-day conference for women led by men hopes to make women great again. How the 22 convention will make you the greatest you ever. Raise your femininity by 500%. First of all, how is a man supposed to tell a woman how to be the ultimate woman? But women need to be taught how to be great again. Oh, Not my yes, words. We do. Like how to land a husband, <gasps> how to lose weight, how to pop out a bunch of kids. Why do men think they need to fix the problems of women? Well, it says the world's mm. ultimate event for women. Yeah, Orlando, Florida, that's going to be the scene of the crime. It's mansplaining palooza and say no to the toxic, bullying, feminist dogma. <laughs> Taught by men to make women great again. Taking the stage now is the founder of the 22 Convention. You're in for a treat, Mr. Anthony Dream Johnson. Anthony Dream Johnson. Anthony Dream Johnson. The first president of the manosphere. It's run by all men, Surprise. which promises to, quote, make women great again. This course is guaranteed to raise your femininity by 500%. Together, we will make women great again. Excuse me, I'm mansplaining here. She said there's nothing wrong. Welcome back to the 22 convention, Make Women Great Again 2020 of Orlando, Florida, being held for the first time ever at 21 Summit. This is the final speech of the first ever 22 convention to begin the campaign of making women great again. And I know y'all played for mansplaining. This is the mansplaining event of the century, but you're about to get a bonus session, a big helping a woman's planning. I got for you next, one of the finest women's planners in the world, in the business and industry, the anti-feminist YouTuber, the one and only, the great Jennifer Molesky. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hello. So how many of you suspected that I would be speaking? There was one woman, yeah, okay. There was one woman that asked in the beginning, do you think there'll ever be a day that you'll speak? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> but, but I did know, but I did know. Uh, when I was in school, I would always volunteer to go first. You know, if there was a school project or whatever, they would say, who wants to go first? And I always wanted to go first because then I was judged by, against no one. And now I'm the last one. <laughs> And I'm not that cool with that. But anyway, my name is Jennifer Molesky, and this is my YouTube channel. This is the reason that I am here uh, for all the things, well, not I suppose not all the things I talk about, but I talk about gender relations, I talk about integrity, and I really want people to stop looking at other people with fault and looking in the mirror. I just think that's a way better, that's a way better approach. So my goal is the same goal I think all the other speakers had that have spoken here, and that's to get you to be excited to go back out into the world to be your authentic self and help change the world. Because you have all flown here. I mean, it's so sad. I think about that. We all had to get on a plane to fly here to meet other women who weren't feminists. Like, we had to fly somewhere. <laughs> And, and, and maybe not, you know, I'm sure they're all in our communities, but I think it'd be nice if we could just find different ways to be ourselves and, and be beacons, you know, be lighthouses. So I call myself a self-responsibilitist. Uh, I think I made that up. I don't know. It just, it just means that I absolutely believe in being self-responsible. There's, there, I have never been a victim. We'll get to that. But I have always found as much fault in every good and bad that has ever happened in my life. And it's worked out really, it's worked out really well for me. Like even if I bomb this speech, there'll be some people who'll be like, well, the lighting, and it was pretty humid. No, it's 100% me. Now, when I was a little girl, 
I, like a little girl, like probably eight years old, I went to Kmart with my grandma. Every Friday, my grandma would pick me up and we'd go have a hot fudge sundae, and it was really a fun thing. And one night, I was in a really crabby, brat, 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 eight-year-old mood. And my grandma wanted to run to Kmart for something. So I ran in with her in my little dark mood. I was never like a tantrumer, but you know, like that dark, cloudy little girl. You've seen her. That was me. And I was at Kmart, and my grandmother ran into a woman that she used to work with at an insurance company. And the woman that she, the woman that my grandmother worked with was in such a good mood and so vivacious and happy and exciting that I stopped. I was just like in awe of her, and I stopped being crabby. And, and I thought that was an interesting thing as an adult because I think we've all been in a room before and we're all like having a good time and then somebody walks in and they're cloudy and you're like, shit, I can't say anything. Like I have to wait for that person to chill out. They bring, negative tends to bring people to their, to their level. But this woman didn't do that. I thought that was pretty cool. So I like to talk about her because this is like 30 years ago and I'm sure she's dead, but I remember her. You never know how you're going to impact somebody. And that's pretty cool. When I was 18 years old, I was in retail. And you know, being a cheerful and kind of a weird girl and out in the world for the first time, I didn't really understand the world yet. And I was working from like 10 in the morning till 2 in the morning at a, at a t-shirt place in Wisconsin Dells. And I would deal with a lot of different people. And I found that women were, women could you know, try to like get free shit, you know, from, from me or get discounts. But men would sometimes be a little creepy. And, and I mean that in they would test their boundaries. Like if I say this, what's her reaction? Okay, now if I say this creepy thing, what's her reaction? You know, and I, and, and I didn't know how to handle that at all. So I thought, who do I know that doesn't deal with that at all. And there was two women, one woman from Israel named Ricky, and then my mother. Those are the two women who both vivacious, really funny, beautiful, feminine, but no one messed with them. No one. So when, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna try this out. So when a creeper would come in, and I'd be like in a good mood, and they would start to be creepy, I would take Jennifer Molesky off, and I would put on a mask, and then I'd like peace out, and I'd hide and just like watch what, this, what Jennifer Molesky was gonna do with this mask on. Oh, are they gone yet? And, and I did that, I had to do that for a year until one day I, had, I stopped taking the masks off. And then I was just Jennifer Molesky and somebody, I mean, nobody messed with me anymore. And I think of that when I think of self-responsibility, which means I am not a victim. I'm a very anti-victim. Had I not had resources to pull on, resources from other people who were self-responsible and acting in a way that I could respect. I may have considered myself a victim at some point, but, but I'm not. I'm not a victim. And uh, you know, I, I, I don't think there's many true victims. I think that children can be victims, animals can be victims, and elderly. And I understand that bad things happen to adults but I think the, even if you can just take 2% blame, like what, just, just 2% or start with 1% and then you can go to 2% and then you can start to see, but that's so empowering. It's so empowering to be able to find any way that you can change your life for the positive. And then I say that I'm a feminist, um, feminist, feminist, feminism apostate. Well, that's not true, that's a lie. I was never really a feminist. Um, but I'm not going to take it down, just because I like to live with my mistakes, and I put that there in the beginning, and that's what I'm going to stick with. But I, I, I feel kind of fortunate because I never really had the opportunity to become a feminist. I grew, I'm 42, so that's actually, I think, f good for me, because I grew up in a time at school where boys were here, and they were gross. And girls were here, and we were gross. And we would come together sometimes to do competition, but mostly we just left each other alone. And, and then in high school, there was a memo that came out that those rules were wrong and you could start kissing. And then everybody started kissing and that was and that. Was that. So that was, that, that's what happened with feminists. So I, I was never a feminist. But schools have changed. So recently, I offered my time up to my subscribers 
for one hour. I said, if, if anyone feels like I could help them, I will talk to you for an hour. And I talked to a man in India, and he was having a hard time with the feminist agenda in India. And his daughter, I can't remember the exact age, nine to 12 years old, but he, she came home from school. There was a mother and a father and a brother and a girl. And one night they're having dinner, and the, the little girl said something to the effect of, women can do anything better than a man. And the, and the father was like, well, tell me more about that. <laughs> and, and, she, and she's like, well, it's just at school. I mean, everybody knows that a woman can do things better than, than a man, and girls are better than boys. And so he had to go through this whole thing. You know, like, can you tell me how your mom is better than me? She's like, well, not you, Dad. You're really cool, you know? And then he wanted to say, what about your brother? But she, that was a losing battle because the brother is the worst person in the world, according to her. <laughs> so then, you know, she, he went on to grandpa and, and uncle and the, and the men. And she, at the end, said, you know, I, I, guess, I guess it's wrong. So feminism is a big thing in schools. What do I have next here? Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is... This is a poster that, are, that is in some elementary schools right now. Know your A to Z's. Prevent violence against women. I don't have any problem with that, but we're talking elementary school. Challenge gender stereotypes and promote respect. A, ask women about their experiences of sexism and harassment. Really? That's what we want to do when you're in fifth grade? Okay, so here, I'm thinking about this. What if, what if you said ask men about their experiences of, sex, of sexism and harassment? What if you said, Johnny, so what's going on? Like, have you, how have you been sexually harassed? He'd be like, um, I guess, I don't know. It, but but I, I guess I have. Yeah, I mean, that time that, that Claire said that you, your butt stunk and whatever, like that's harassment. So if we switch any of these to men, We'd be in an uproar. Believe reports of violence and sexual assault offer support, not suspicion. What? Okay, okay, so we're teaching women to believe that. Well, what about when someone says something about my husband? I'm supposed to believe that? Or your husband, or your dad? I think we have a pretty good country where we try to get to the bottom of things, but if you're, in, if you're a little kid, you're learning that it's just women, and then here, find a way to support women's choices, whatever they are whatever they are. Okay, well, we're being, here, let me see. Raising your children, K to 12, that's 15,000 hours. So maybe you're like, okay, well that's just a stupid poster. I can absolutely combat that, and you probably absolutely can. But K to 12 is 15,000 hours. 15 V, <laughs> I guess I didn't edit that, I don't know what that is. But 15,000 hours, so Malcolm Gladwell, wrote a book, it's not his blink, it's not, maybe it's outliers, but it's anyone can become an expert at anything with 10,000 hours, okay? What did you, what are you an expert at from your K through 12 education? That's disappointing, I mean, they don't even teach you to be an expert at anything, but with little snippets of indoctrination, uh, 15,000 hours certainly adds up. Okay, they're not at school, they're with you. Now you have an impact. It's true, except for the average person, I hate to, I hate to talk about the CDC because I think they're kind of poopy farts, but eight to 10 years old is six hours per day of screen time. So what are they, what are they seeing with their screen time? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I know there's parental locks and whatnot, but I mean, think about the, the six hours a day on a screen. If they're staring at that and then you like stop and interrupt, and get their eye contact for six hours a day. Okay, 11 to 14, nine hours a day, it gets worse. And then it gets a little bit better because they're a little bit more active in life. 15 to 18 years old, they're seven and a half hours. And that's not good. Okay, well, let's keep them off the screen. Okay, well, they're out in the world. So this is a new ad campaign in Canada, I think. I, don't, don't pay attention to this. The most loving gift you can give your first child is to not have another one. Oh, that's so sweet. So we're being infiltrated. We're being sold an agenda. 
So I thought, <laughs> thinking about the Indian guy and my speech and my life and everything, I thought, well, I wonder how, how can we fight feminism? Hmm. Okay, that's a good question. Google's smart, right? There's no agenda behind them. They're just fair and it's all equality. So I went to Google and I said, how can parents fight feminism? How fight feminism? Number one, feminist parenting, the fight for equality at home. Number two, six ways to explain feminism to parents who just don't get it. <laughs> Number three, how feminist mothers can raise feminist sons. We need the patriarchy to defend the vicious feminists that want to eat you. That's not how it works. That is kind of how some people's brains work, but I don't want that. Number five, gender equality starts at home. Seven tips for raising feminists. Six, a feminist guide to raising boys. Number seven, want to be a feminist parent? Four goals to consider. How to raise a feminist child when your family doesn't like your feminism. And feminists forgotten fight for family values. Okay, so the, the stats are kind of weird on that. It's like 30 to 60% of women identify as a feminist. Then why? then why 100% of the first page of Google is there all how to be a feminist? Do you guys know, this is stupid, but do you know where the best place in the world to hide a dead body is? It's the second page of Google, because no one ever goes there. So, so we have this, and that's why, so we, we, so this is an agenda, I believe. And that's why I'm really happy to be here. And like I was saying before, that we had to all fly here and th say, who's going who's gonna to feed the dog? And we have the air conditioner being fixed on Saturday, and maybe Claire can come and fix that. And, and we had the plan just to be around women who were somewhat like-minded. We're all different, and we're all unique. But I think we're all wanting to be better, and we're not finding that being better is in alignment with being a feminist, I think. My mom said, Jennifer, who cares what you think? Thanks, mom. And you might be wondering that too. A year and a half ago when I started my YouTube channel, I said, mom, I think I'm going to start this YouTube channel. And she said, I love you, but who cares what, what you think? And I think that's very fair. But I said to her, mom, unfortunately, I really think there's a niche here. I don't think there's enough women speaking up for women in a different way. She's like, okay, well, good luck. And, <laughs> um, but I just wanted to be a role model, a beacon, an example. You know, I mean, I always think of the Kardashians. I rip on them a lot. I wish they knew that so they would be like, I hate Jennifer Molesky. So everyone would come over and be like, who's Jennifer Molesky? But so far that hasn't worked. But I just, I think of the Kardashians and the women who are just in plain s vicious with their sexuality, and that's the only way to get the attention. But it works. I'm talking about them. It works. So lucky for me, women email me because of this. No, not my, well, my mom had me, so I, thanks, mom. So thanks to her, but my YouTube channel, and, and women email me saying, thank you, thank you for saying something, because I can't find it. I can't find anyone who thinks like I do. And then men email me and say, you give me hope that there's other women out there. And there are. It's, I'm happy I'm not dating anymore. It is not, it is not fun out there, but there are good people and I think there's more on the way every day. What, someone had a speech up here, like every day a woman from, is going from 25 to 26 and there we go, everyone's getting older. But I also think with that, everyone is getting a little bit wiser every day, every day we wanna be better. And I don't know if I have this in my speech, but I think the only way to bring feminists to us is to, okay. I was driving years ago. I went to work, 56 minutes it took me to get to work. I got in my car to go to work and I was against guns. And I got in my car and on the way home there was a man speaking and he was pro-guns and he gave all these facts about guns. And he never called me an asshole. He didn't say I didn't care. He didn't say I was stupid. 
So I was like, okay, I'm gonna listen to this guy. And then fact, 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 kindness, kindness. And he said, you know, I think the thing that everyone is forgetting is the people who are pro-guns and the people who are anti-guns want safety. Everyone wants the same thing. Now, I think that there are feminists out there who actually want to destroy everything, but I think there's a lot of people who are like, I'm a feminist too, because girl power and, and whatnot. So I think if there's one thing, let the men be vicious to women. But as, as a woman, I think the best way for us to win any hearts, because I don't, we're, not, we're not hating women. I really want women to be happy, and I really believe in the family. So I can't say anything really bad about feminists. I have to be somewhat open to them because I have to be able to engage with them. Which actually, I'm no different than you, but we're totally different. So however, this is how, my YouTube channel is how I express myself. I don't know how you uniquely, I, mean, I th think there's an idea in everyone's head right now of what they want to do when they go home. Maybe. And I just would want you to express that. Okay, how are we going to fight this? So this is, I don't necessarily need to talk about this, but there's something called the trivium. It's a classical education system. And it goes like this. The trivium is grammar, logic, rhetoric. So if I had a book for everyone here, it was a medical book, okay, and I said, reach under your seat and pick it up and turn to page 184. Read it, think about it, and tell me what you read. Unless you're in the medical pro profession, no one here would be able to do that because you don't understand the words. And that's the grammar. So soon, when you learn something, if you're going to be an autodidact, which means that you just you are interested in something and you propel your own learning due to the multiple resources that we have, you would have to learn all the grammar. You'd have to learn all the definitions. And that takes a long time. Have you ever done something stupid like me and I look up a definition and there's a word in the definition that I don't know, so I have to go and like dig even further? It's kind of a pain to learn things, but it's surely worth it. So we have the grammar, and then once you have the grammar, you can understand. Like, oh, okay, I get that. Maybe I don't agree, but I understand. And then the rhetoric is when you can say it convincingly to everyone here. And that's good, because you understand. And then you, can, and then you can fight ideas with your ideas fairly. And, and you can sh share and learn, and the best idea can win. So from great rhetoric comes sound bites. So here's some sound bites of feminism. I, I went, and it's like before the Women's March, you can go, you know, and you write on your poster all your feminist mantras. There's 150 of them. You can take these, she says. Men of quality do not fear equality. I don't disagree. Oh, that sounds good to me. Men of quality do not fear equality. But then we go on to the future is female. Hey, wait a minute. I thought it was all equal. The future is feminist. Hey, wait a minute. Mm. Our voice is the future. Whose? The conference? No. The feminism. Let's take up more space. Why? To be equal? Do you want to take up just, do you want it to be like equal space? Do you want to take up more space than you're comfortable with? Like, I don't understand. We're all God's children. Equality. She told me so. This is probably the most honest thing. Tell me or ask me about my feminist agenda. And this is, this is stupid and funny because <laughs> If you tell some feminists that there's an agenda, they'll say, no, we just want equality. Well, where are we not equality? And then they'll give a, a pay gap, perhaps, try to battle that. There's not, there's not a lot of facts they have. Um, but there is a feminist agenda. Now here, I, I wrote down some other ones. Here's some other, some other quips. Nasty women unite. OK, well, that's actually probably just as honest is asking me about my feminist agenda. OK, so what if you're not nasty? No uterus, no opinion. I hate that. I get that from men in my comments section. If you're not a man, you cannot talk about men. Really? If, if, if you're not black, you can't talk about blacks. If you're not Hispanic, you can't talk about that. If you're not an engineer, you can't talk about that. OK, so what? I talk about feminism and waitressing, which I'd be OK with, actually. but. <laughs> But I'd like to be able to talk about more things. Open arms, open minds, open yours. Well, okay, but okay. 
I will. I'll listen to what you have to say. Will you listen to me? No. <laughs> I imagine they'd say that. I'm just I'm kind of making them like I'm, I'm creating the bitchiest avatar of a feminist, and that's what I'm battling right now. Uh, if you can cut off my productive choice, can I cut off yours? Maybe they don't. <laughs> I'm 42. I have a different educational system. But it seems that everyone forgot that there's this one moment where reproduction happens. It's, it's sex. If you guys, it is sex. When you have sex, that's when it happens. It's not a couple days after. It's not when you're thinking uh, about what you should do or how hard it's going to be. We're not asking to fill vaginas up with cement. We are asking them to think critically about who they have sex with. You know, I was thinking about promiscuity. I said to somebody out in the hall, what if, this would be horrible, what if men and women, when they had sex with somebody out of wedlock, they had to write their, that tattoo their name on their body? No one will go to the beach anymore, except for the whores, you know, and the, and the, and the players. But that would, be, that would be interesting. You know what else? Bart, thank you for everything. Uh, he said to me, we're, no, he didn't say to me, we were talking about sex dolls. And that some people use sex dolls. And they, you can have a blonde, and you can have a brunette, and if you don't have enough money for a redhead, you'll just use your, your friends. And I thought, well, well, that sounds so gross, except for that's promiscuity. I mean, we can shower and we have new cells and stuff, but we're, we're better than dolls. So there's that. Okay. The future is female. This one is close to my heart because I don't have any children. And if I was a man in this reverse situation, I'd be called a beta cuck because my husband has full custody of his beautiful daughter. So I get to have the honor of thinking about and concentrating on raising a child. Raising a child to be an adult so when she is old enough, she can go off into the world and be smart and amazing. So she came home after spending time with her, with her mother. And she knows that I like her to journal. She's, she's seven. I like her to write about her dreams and her goals in the morning. She's like, oh, I got a new diary. Do you want to see it? And I said, yes, I want to see it. So she came out, and it, and it said, I'm a little feminist. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, you're not. OK. okay. And, then, and then I opened it up, and it said, the future is female. So I took, I said, can I have that? And I ran downstairs. <laughs> I said, you, you know, I'm looking at my husband right now. Did you see this? He's like, poor guy, no. Uh, can I talk to her about this? Yes. Okay. So I said, young lady, you're too, you don't even know what, what a feminist is. So I'm not going to go into that, but I'm slowly going to try to tempt you out of feminism as you grow up. But when you get older, you're going to have to decide for yourself. But the future is female. OK, let's talk about your dad. What does your, do you love your dad? I love my dad so much. OK, okay so why do, you, why do you love your dad? You know, like, what does he do? Well, he provides, and, and he you know, leads in the prayer, and he's funny, and he's really good at tickles, and we go on bike rides, and he wrestles, and, OK, great. And then we went through all the men in our life. Are they good? Yeah, they're great. OK, well, what about your mom? Yeah, she's awesome. OK, why? Well, she teaches me, and she cooks, and okay, what about Jennifer, and what about all the women? I said, I, and she wants to be grown up so much. I said, when you're a big girl, do you want to just hang out with women? She's like, no, I'm like, me neither. <laughs> do you want a husband one day? Yeah, do you want, do you want t your dad to be around? Yes. So we added male and. So now it says the future is male and female. So that's, I mean, we have to fight against this. If you don't raise your children, one day you'll have to fight them. So I, I think that we have to catch children. I know this it almost sounds culty, but, but minds are malleable at any age. But we have to, I think, catch children and just raise them with logic and nurturing, and I think they'll come out ahead. Honorable conversations 
cannot be had with someone who's hysterical. I think that most feminists are pretty hysterical, men and women. So let's catch them before that. When I was a little girl, I really, <laughs> I would always start a club, like when I was like 10 years old, before recess, I'd be like, if you want, I'm starting a club. And if you want to be a part of my club, just come and sign up. And guess what? All the girls would come and sign up for a club. What are we going to do? Nothing. I mean, they just want to be a part of something. We all just want to be a part of something. So I think of feminism, you know, it's just a, a thing that women do. It's, it's a club. It's a sisterhood. I have no problem with that, but it's kind of, no, it is toxic. I think of gangs for men, well, and women. Maybe this is a gang. Maybe it is a gang. So how do we, how do we catch that before? Well, it was, it was difficult because, like I said, I, I always like to go first with a speech because every speech that we heard, I looked at, I looked at my husband and was like, I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about that. I'm gonna talk. So everyone that spoke is probably like, what a poacher. We talked about that. But it's not. I really came up with this a while ago. So my idea is to keep families intact. Girls with no fathers in the home have lower self-esteem. Okay, fine. That sucks. But also, women with low self-esteem are, are more promiscuous. Boys, boys with... Um, Boys with, so girls with high self-esteem don't have, you know, sex. Boys with high self-esteem have more sex, but hopefully they're covering that over there. <laughs> no, no father families mo more likely to be victims of abuse, especially with single mothers. Uh, single mothers bring, men just tend to be more predatorial. But either way, there's violence and, and, and uh, abuse. And this is, this is uh, sexual and physical. We know this. Children with high BMI more often come from fatherless homes. Here's something interesting. More, say that word, I can't say it. Authoritarian. Thank you. <laughs> Fathers have the fittest children. I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, I'm not saying that I want that. Would you just be whatever you want? But, but uh, that, that was really interesting to me. The more opportunities a child has to interact with biological father, the less likely they are to commit a crime or have contact with the juvenile justice system. Okay, another way to say that is men and women who are incarcerated, the population of the prisons mostly encompass fatherless homes. Now, here's something that no one else has mentioned, which I think is cool, and I, I don't really say this eloquently. If a, um, if a man and wife raise a child, they're less likely to end up in jail, but they have the same statistical chance as children raised by just their father. So if we want to keep children, adults, out of prison, mother, father, or just father? Well, we don't want to hear just father, so let's try to keep the families intact. I think that just seems, that just seems better. And the other thing I would say, and no one talks about this, if you and I didn't know if I was going to talk about this or not either, but if you get a divorce, you're going to have to live and die with it. And I don't want you to, at the end of your five minutes, think, no, to realize that you took advantage of a system. Like, I understand that you can get a lot of money, but you don't have to do that. I, I just want you to have integrity. I have a, I have a, a video called, it has far too views. I feel like all my really interesting videos have low views and all of my contentious ones have high views, but of course that's it. That's, that's just the way it goes. But it's called Deathbed Meditations. And I did this thing once. I feel like there's two types of fantasies. There's the ones that you create, like, like when you're a girl and you go out with a guy, or a guy goes out with a woman, and they're like, oh, I think this could be something. I think I'm gonna take him on a picnic. And then maybe the picnic will go, good, okay, I'll make that sandwich that I really like. And I'll do it. You know what I mean? It's like a fantasy that you create. And then there's the ones that are like, ah! Oh, I, I thank God no one can get into my head. I had no idea where that thought c came from. But I did this, this purposeful fantasy of dying. And I started naming it in my deathbed meditation. So I'd lay in bed, and I would force myself to be on like my deathbed. So I have three minutes, two minutes, one minute dead. And the first time I did it, it was so impactful. I felt my, and my family was around me in my fantasy. And I was like clawing to stay alive. And I don't know if anyone's read the book, The Godfather. The book is better than the movie. But right before he dies, he falls on his knees 
And he goes, life is beautiful. And then he dies because the existence is so beautiful. And in those moments of existence and importance, you realize what, what is important. It is God and family and life and light. So if you get a divorce, try to be nice. And if a woman that you know, especially for women, ladies, if you have a lady friend who's going to get a divorce, please help her not feel like a victim and, and manipulative and vicious because that's not a good place to make decisions from. Okay. And please counsel her to share that time with her father, with their father without a fight because the children will grow up and they will not be pleased with mama. So how do we keep families intact? Okay, so when, when I create, when I do a video about relationships, <laughs> they're always inspired from my husband. So I'll just like stare at my husband, and I love him so much, that an idea will come to me and then I feel like if it's noble or not to share with the world. So this one is, find a man who makes you feel fat and ugly. If you can do that, you're winning. So what I mean by that is, I, I, poor guy, I told him too. I said to him one night, I'm like, you, you, you make me feel fat and ugly. He's like, oh my God, like, what have I done? I, you're so beautiful. No, 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 this is good. I imagine, like, I look at him and I love him so much. I imagine if I was like really an obese, ghastly woman who's toothless, and then, and then, I, and then I found this man, I would do anything to keep him because he has options. So I, I want to please him. He makes me feel fat and ugly. I'm like, do you want, do you want a sandwich or what? You want roast tonight? Do you want to go for a hike? What do you want to do? You know, like whatever you want to do, I will, I will do that for you. So thank you for making me feel fat and ugly. Okay, uh, my most popular video is, is this one, okay? So this has a little over a half a million views. You can guess that word. <laughs> now, it's funny because I only say that, that line once, but this, this video is very loved, okay? So I, I, I do suggest everyone watch it. The role of women, be the home. You're not meant to leave the home and try to make money for the home. Now, I understand we're in a weird world because sometimes you need two incomes, but I also think if you really want to be a stay-at-home mother, you can have a conversation with, with your husband and say, listen, this is a goal and this is why I want to do it. And then I bet, I bet he will get on board and say, okay, I can't do it now. I can do it in a year. I can do it in two years. Like that is a noble pursuit. Not always. But I, but I wonder, I mean, it's worth a conversation. So be the home, don't compete, compliments. This is all stuff you've heard this weekend. Keep clean, I like this one. Keep clean the house, the children, your speech, and your intentions. That is your job. It's their job too. Listen, they're having conventions. They're talking about this. Offer yourself to your husband. Oh, sex. It is so important. If there's anything that, that men are aching for and longing for, it's, it's sex with their partner. Not a whore, not another woman. They want you. Allow him to be masculine and create a good life. Uh, be there to calm him through his successes and failures. Men will fail. That's OK. Be there for them. And when they're successful, yay, that's, that's great. Now, what I want to share with you about this is the reactions. So I have, I don't know, 20 or 30,000 comments on this. But I'm going to show you the range of comments from men. Everything, it, range. Everything you just said is why I love my wife with all my heart. She is my home. This whole video was spot on. It made me think of my wife and children the whole time. I can't even say it. It's so sweet. And I'm happy for that. Husband's house band holds, this, holds things together. A wife runs the house. 
that's a big job. Can you read it? Because <laughs> I can't, oh my goodness, this is so hard. What's the difference between men and women? Women don't cry, or men don't cry. I'll help you, stupid. Jennifer. Turn the, turn George the Bruno said, George Bruno said, um, the difference is facial hair. And I wanted to say, take my tweezers for a week and I'll prove you wrong. <laughs> I, th <laughs> I, think, I think it's the emotion. Uh, women will come and sit at my table with my wife and I uninvited. They look at each other. They all say the same thing. I want what you two have. Commitment is what we have. You are the best. I wish I could make my wife understand. Our life would be immensely better. I played this video for my wife. She started walking off like a vampire running from sunlight. I normally don't comment on videos, but this one made me slightly depressed. Never knew how bad I wanted something in my life to come home to until someone else really spelled it out. And then here, th this isn't like, th that was the gamut. But then here's some other ones. I protect not because she needs it. I protect because she's worth it. I can't do that anymore. OK. So, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. OK. <laughs> I have something written down here. So, so, so people have talked about uh, dance partners. And my husband and I, took, before the world ended, we took a ballroom dancing. We just found this place that offered free lessons. It was really cool. So, so what's cool about ballroom dancing is it looks so graceful and effortless, but there is pressure, pressure, pressure. And when we, when we take our stance, he is pushing against me, and I'm pushing against him, and I need him really strong. So before we start the dance, I'll like check him. <laughs> You know, like, and, and, and he doesn't bitch, he doesn't cry. He gets stronger. And then when he's ready, we go and we dance. And it looks very nice, but it's a workout. And I think some women, I think it happens for two reasons. I think that some men are weak. They don't understand that we need strength. Oh, I tried it and my wife didn't like it. No, you didn't, because she would have liked it. <laughs> women need strength. So I think that the, 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 there's some men who are weak, and I also think there's some women who are too strong and don't know how to submit. And then you have this. You have pressure, and then I think the man's like, wait a minute, <laughs> what is going on? We're, we want to be going in the same direction, but this is really uncomfortable. And then there's a pressure, and then you're both on the floor. And he's like, that sucked. <laughs> and the woman's like, I want a new partner. When instead, maybe, we could just say, <laughs> we need to learn how to dance. I need more pressure from you. And he'll say, well, I need you to submit a little bit more. Or not, I don't know. But that's what I think. You know, and the other thing I was thinking, like, how can we, how can we become better women? And I can't tell you what to do, or you, or you, or you, or any of you. But there's this thing in, in Alcoholics Anonymous where it says, I admit that I'm powerless, oh, what is it? I admit that I'm powerless over alcohol, and something, something, something. But I admit I am powerless over what, as a woman? I mean, you can do it with anything, but we're at a woman's convention. I'm, I am powerless over comparing myself to other women. OK, well, how can we solve that? We'll get off social media. OK, I admit that I'm powerless over my desire for power over my husband. I mean, I, I'm just guessing some problems. But maybe that would be a fun way. So I need yourself, I need you to work on yourself so you can go out into the world and just be happy and, 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 and be an example for, for other women. Is that what I was going to say? <laughs> oh, yeah. So I had this, I'm telling you, I'm covering everything that everyone else was. But originally I had this as a lowercase b and an uppercase b. Beauty, beauty. Lowercase beauty, uppercase beauty. There's a difference. But then I have a video on YouTube, princesses versus queens. So I, I changed that. But it's beauty. I mean, there's grand beauty and there's simple beauty. I'll explain it. So I think of this princess. I tell my stepdaughter, you are a princess now. We are teaching you how to be a queen. When you go out into the world, I expect you to be a queen. 
But right now, a princess, and this is all normal, they think about their face and fitness, and that's great. Everyone should go on a hike and be, and be mindful about their health. The food they take in, their, their body, their body is getting pretty awesome, feels good. Finesse, flirting, being charming, but they're also demanding, and they're out to get and compete with other women. I actually have no problem with that. That's how life is. But they forget that there should be an end to this. Like, you have this power as a little princess to, to get the best king you can and then grow up. So I think that princesses learn and gain from Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, public education, TVs, and movies. That's how we learn how to be a princess. But who, what about a queen? I mean, I just named some things. Frugality and finances. I wasn't raised to understand money at all. I was raised poor. So I am afraid to spend money. And sometimes not. I don't have a great relationship with money. And I'm working on it because I'm a grown up, self responsibility. But I wish someone had done that. We do this thing with our daughter, we give tickets, okay, to try to teach about finances. So everything she does that's good, she gets a ticket for a currency and then she gets to spend it. So like five tickets is 20 minutes on her tablet. Uh, 25 tickets is meal of her choice prepared by her. She likes to cook, but I, I mean, we cook with her. And, and one of the things, and I, I actually think that there's a lot of adults who could use this. We give her a ticket for saying, excuse me, out in public. So one day at the grocery store, she just like got in everyone's way just to say, excuse me. And she gained a lot of tickets. I don't care. You know, I want, her, I want her happy to say excuse me. If she says thank you to someone holding the door, she gets a ticket. Because she's oblivious. Da, 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 da. Well, she's fine. She's seven. She's oblivious. But I want her to start to think about the currency. And you have to be a good person to get something, and then you can spend it. But you have to be right. Um, if she gives a compliment, she gets two tickets. No, three tickets. So it's really cute to watch her because she used to be really shy about it. But she went up to a woman, she's like, I really like your shoes. And the woman's like, oh, thank you. But she's just, she has no social skills, just, so she just stood there staring at her. I was like, okay, I'm just going to let this plan out. Because they're really red and they're really shiny. OK, great. Well, that's why I bought them. And then she comes up to me, she's like, I get my tickets. And I don't care. I, I want her. I want her civil. And I want her to be of service. Because that feels good. Fidelity, we don't talk about that a lot. Family, cooking. I can't believe how many women don't want to cook. But you know what? If men said that it was like a man's thing, women would be rioting in the streets because, God damn it, they can cook too. You know? <laughs> to think about the future, have fortitude, to respect the man of the house and the father, to maintain the house if it's good. If it's not, make it better. Honor the masculine, give homage to the feminine, be a mother to your children. Be a mentor to young women. So it has struck in me lately that whatever you want to be when you grow up, you want to be an engineer, you want to be an orthodontist, you want to be a dog groomer, a teacher, you can go and give a lot of money to someone to teach you to do that. But the one thing that most women will be in service of is a household, a husband, and a family. Who's teaching that? Only you, only you can teach that. Princess versus queen. Princess, they can get that anywhere. Queen, from a mother, from a mentor. In my estimation, this is an opinion piece. Oh yeah, I like this. Okay, so as I said to you, I, I, it would be really great, I think, if you went out into the world and did whatever you wanted to do. You know, be your unique self. But this little fence post. When you are strong with conviction, you just stand firm. Have any of you ever seen the video about the, sec uh, the first follower? So, yeah, it's good, right? Okay, so, the first, so, so every, every revolution, every party, everything needs a leader, but the, the other person that's so courageous is the first follower. So there's this video, I should have put it up, of this, this guy, and he's at this, <laughs> it looks like a, a Woodstock, and it's a big grass field, and he is just like rocking, like the hardest dancing you've ever seen ever. He's just like, going for it, going for it. And then another person finally, 
after like five minutes of this dude dancing alone, he starts rocking with him, and then, and then it's hundreds of people. Because you need that. I mean, no one wants to be by that crazy dude, unless there's two crazy dudes. You know, and then it's not such a stupid thing after all. So when I think of offense, OK, so you have the, fir the leader and then the first follower. And what is important from then on, and especially the third person, is now we're going to decide where our organization is going to be. So we have one person, two person. Are we going to create a force field of protection for this? Or are we go I like this. We're going to have a first person and a second and a third, and we're all strong, and now we have a community. Okay. And now we're really, really strong. And we, we have the wherewithal and the intensity to keep, keep the bad out, the evil, and the, the knowledge and strength from each other to know who is going to be the person that's going to join with us in unity. And I've been thinking about mentorship because I, I want, it's like I want all of you and me to be a mentor. But honestly, sometimes we're not ready to be a mentor. So I think another thing that could be helpful is if you, I, I want to say demand, but I, if you would awaken the possibility of mentorship within another. Like, I want to be a, a good wife. So if I can find a woman who's been married for a long time and say, would you be, they do that in, they do that in everything. For, 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 you know, you have a mentorship in business and you want to stay sober and you want to be right and you want to do this and I just got involved in the church. But they don't really do that with relationships. So what if we could say, Sally, you've been married for 10 years, 20 years, 50, I don't care. And your husband is really happy. You seem really happy. Can I, can you, will you teach me? Can I call you when I want to yell at my husband? Yes, yes, call me. Good Lord, woman, don't yell at your husband. I bet they would do that. I, I forgot, oh no. I thought that I forgot to say something. I did. That's okay, I'm going to say it right now. I was itching to talk about fashion when, when the, gay, gay, what were they? Guzzies, when the guzzies were up. Because my husband, my husband and I recently did this, we made a pact where if we leave the house for longer than 30 minutes, we have to dress up. <laughs> or leave the hotel room for longer than 30 minutes. We have to dress up. So we have been doing that. And I just want to tell you about that experience. Because I would just wear whatever, whatever is comfortable. And so would he. But when we decided to do this, well, first of all, I believe in civility. Oh, dear. I believe in civility. But when I put nice clothing on, I feel far more civil. I'm thinking about how I'm flowing and moving. And so is he. And he feels more dignified, so he acts more dignified. Now, here's what's cool about, for, for my experience, you do whatever you want, but I'm just telling you about my experience. When we go out, we are, I, I can see everyone like this. It's bit like when we're in the produce section, and I'm feeling avocados, there's people. And many people will stop and say, did someone get married? What do you do for a living? Are you famous? <laughs> We've gotten that. It's crazy. I mean, in, in, a, in a sane and beautiful, lowercase b, uppercase b, princess queen, we wouldn't be stopped because it'd be the norm. But, but have you seen those, those benches? They're like, if you're looking at this, your advertising dollar could go a long way if you advertise at this bench. So I feel like we're, we're an advertisement. OK, here's my cool story. We were out to brunch, and I was facing this way. And, and right here is an eight top of women. And my husband is right across from me. And I'm cold, like I always am. And he got up to use the restroom, and he put his coat on me. I didn't ask. He put his coat on me. He used the restroom. When he came back, we decided that we were ready to go. So I got up, and I was done with the coat because I wasn't cold anymore, and I put it on him like I always do. I always put his coat on him. He puts his arm out. We walk out, and it's a big, you know, the, the garage door is at the hip little restaurants now, and you can see out into the sidewalk. He always has me walk on the inside. So he like moves me to the inside, and we walk off. And he said, did you see the women at that eight top? I said, no. He said that every single one of them stopped what they were doing to watch our interaction. So even the women who were facing away you know, were like watching what we're doing. And I said, I hope and I think that that will change one of them, to awaken them to the possibility that, oh, that looked that looked kind of nice. 
you see he put, he put his coat on her because she was cold. Well, maybe I want that. Okay, well, gee, well, you know what? I want that. That looks pretty good. But I've never put a jacket on a man. Well, shut up. Maybe I need to do some things. Maybe I need to act a little bit more civil to get civil. Uh, there's a woman, and it's funny because when I say self-responsibility, sometimes all it takes is imagination. I always say that Little House on the Prairie could never, <laughs> Google would never be invented by anyone in the Little House on the Prairie time because they didn't have the imagination for it. You have to, in order to get to there, you have to have sneaky paths where you can look back and be like, oh, that was cool, that was cool, that was cool, and now here I am. So sometimes you have to have the imagination. This is how ding-dongy I was years ago. There was a woman that I worked with at a restaurant, and we had a, a work meeting, and it was her day off. So she comes in, and she's like, to the nines, she looks so good. And I said, Bree, do you, you have another job? She's like, no. I said, oh, did you, wait, like, were you at the doctor? I'm like, well, you look really good. She's like, no, I just like to dress like this. And I couldn't believe it. That I had the right, like she could, wait a minute, she just leaves the house for no reason looking like that? Well, maybe I can do that. And then, and then I did, you know, like, and it, I can't believe it took courage for me to leave my house looking well. I, I mean, just saying it right now, I can't believe it. But I had to give myself permission. I'm like, well, if Brie can do it, if Brie can do it, I can do it. And then I did do it. And maybe I've, maybe I've, Stimulated the mind of another woman to do that, and then I didn't know I didn't know how I was going to end this. But then I thought I thought about women, women who we should acknowledge, it, not Cardi B and not the Kardashians. Uh, Juliet Gordon Lowe, founder of Girl Scouts, that's pretty cool. This have does anyone know what Campfire Girls is? Doesn't matter. They're defunct now. But I, I bought this book at an antique shop. It's the it's the Campfire Girls, and it's like hundreds of. It's similar to the Girl Scouts. You would have to get badges. You would do things, and then you'd earn a badge. I think it's like five bucks on Amazon. If you do one page of that, you will be more qualified than most, most women, I would say. It's just amazing. That they, and, it, and it's sweet little things, like learn how to make three appetizers for three people that you love and make sure that they like it, you know? <laughs> the feminists would hate it. Uh, Boy, uh, Boy and Girl Scouts of America, that was by three women. Julia Child, she was inspired by food. They didn't have children. And her husband was an artsy-fartsy kind of dude uh, who lived in Paris. And she, when she, she remembers like her first amazing, she had uh, sommelier, oysters, and fine wine. So she's like, I want to do this. So she went to Cordon Bleu. And, and then trained with, with the finest chefs, and then, and then started a little community for, for women uh, to teach American women in Paris how to do French cooking. And then she got her TV show. And then she was concerned, what, in the 80s, I think, about the lack of education that children were getting about food. So she started this whole, this whole program where chefs Fine, fine chefs would come in with farmers, and farmers would come in with their produce, and then the chefs would come in, and they would teach children. That's pretty cool, I think. Oh, yeah, and there's like a Facebook, Moms Who Cook, Clean, Organize, and Chat. So these are some women who did, they were inspired by something, and went into the world to be a mentor. Now, these are big mentors. I understand that this is Facebook and 16,500, but they're impacting. So I, I suppose whatever you want to do to impact the world is what I would want you to do. Because, like I said, I, I don't want women, and I don't want women who are thinking, maybe I don't love feminism. I don't want them to have to find a YouTuber to have to come and fly and get on a plane to be here. I think if we could all have places in our community so they don't have to fly here, but also so we can bring more women here next year is kind of my goal. And that's all I have to say. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, we can talk, or I, I have some stories. Uh, Bulldog said that he, he, I just want to relate to him, because he said that high-quality men want to be challenged 
by women, right? When we, when we often think that we should just like be pleasing to them. Here's just a stupid story. When I was in my 20s, I was out, I'm, I'm very rarely approached by men, but this man approached me, we were, at, we were at a bar, and you know what, this is really rude, this is a rude story, but, but I, I'm gonna tell it anyway. He, was, he said like, hey, what are you doing here? And I just pretended that I was really, really dumb. And I said, oh, I'm just here with my friends and we're having a good time. And, and I told him that I wanted, my dream in life was to work for Hallmark, to write little pretty stories. So my parents made me go and get a paper science degree. And he's like, well, can I buy you a drink? And I said to him, I said, I wish your standards were higher. You know, like, because like, I, I, I wanted him to be like, girl, you are such a dingbat. But, but he didn't do that. So, so men and women both do that. Um, oh, I read this. My, my Marxist feminist when I was looking for memes, or whatever they're called, my Marxist feminist dialectic brings all the boys to the yard. And it had like this, this raging woman. And I, that's where I thought of if we don't raise our children, we're gonna have to fight them because it was like boys and girls. That's how I see them. They're adults, fine, they're 18, they're 20, they're 50, but they're acting like children because they're untamed. As far as I see, no one has raised them. That's not good. Um, yep, someone else said, you made me cry, Priscilla, right? Because the first thing you said was women go out to complain. I mean, and that's not why they go out, but sometimes you'll find these little clucky cluckies and they say mean things about their husbands and you said, don't do that. Oh, I was so moved. And I just want to reiterate that. If you go out and everyone is complaining, God, if there's, if there, even if you and your husband are having a hard time, proclaim one great thing about your husband, you'll feel so much better looking at him in the eye. Um, and you know, I guess for the women that don't have, haven't found someone yet, I'll tell you about a struggle that I had. I w work in fine dining. Oh yeah, I have a minute left. I work in fine dining and I would see these couples that have been together forever, like 30, 40, 50 years, and the woman would look at him so sweetly and the man would look at them, her so sweetly and they were so bonded and beautiful. And I'm like, I want that. But whenever I met a man who I could feel would do that for me, I was repelled. So there's, I always say there's a, <laughs> Groucho Marx says, I would never be a member to any club that would have, have me as a member, you know, because it's like, oh, you trust me to be part of you, I don't want to hang out with you. And that's how I was with relationships for a long time. I didn't think, you know, some of the men have talked about like applause. And I, I want to ask young girls who are looking for a partner, what kind of a man do you want applause from? Or are you still in a phase where you want applause from everyone? You know, because, because we have to discern that. Find out what kind of a man you want your daily applause from and what you'll do for those applause. Um, I can't remember what, what the beginning of that story was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I would go on these fake dates on Friday nights, we'll call it. And I would close my eyes. Remember the kind of fantasy that you control? And I would imagine myself going out with a really nice man, someone who would allow me to be kind and honorable to him and would do it in return, and it was so uncomfortable. Because it's like my neuron connections weren't, that wasn't my pattern. That wasn't what I was comfortable with. My pattern, you know, like when, when you meet someone and you're like, I feel like I've known them forever. You have. It's your shitty relationship with your parent that you're trying to repair, that you've never done. Like, I know that Jesse Lee Peterson had some, some things, some contentious things to say, but I have to agree, until we work on our childhood, we're gonna try to keep earning and yearning and earning for that love of the parents. So I had to like re recalibrate my brain until that was an option. Like, oh shit, that imaginary date wasn't so bad. Like, that's actually pretty attractive. So then I could go out into the world, and when I would meet a man who I actually thought would love me, that I could love, they were attractive to me. Um, I, I think I'm really done. Oh, yeah, zero. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. That was fun. Once I got gone, I, you couldn't shut me down. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. There's no one here telling me to shut up. So is, is there questions, or what's the plan? You guys don't have to ask questions. Time for a couple. Couples, too. I just want to make a quick comment. You were talking about that woman that you met in the Kmart with yes, your grandma. Yes, the Kmart lady. And 
last night I met you for the first time and we had a short discussion and when I left that's how you made me feel I was oh. like she was so bright and just fun to be around and I want to be around her more and so you are that woman yeah, I'm the that's all I want in life is to be the Kmart lady <laughs> I should, I should rename my YouTube channel Jennifer Lusky, the Kmart lady. I'll take it. I'll take it. Anyone else? It went horribly. <laughs> no, you did great. I know. I'm just kidding. He, he, Anthony just walked in. So when we first got to the conference, uh -huh. we talked a little bit about uh, some of the feedback you get on your YouTube channel. Yeah, it's fun. Let's talk about uh, Nawalt and Awalt. Uh -huh. what, what are your responses when, when um, men bring that up? How do you fight that urge to prove them wrong? It feels like it's a goad, you know what I mean? Like they want to goad you into a fight by claiming that you couldn't possibly exist as a human being with the thoughts that you have formulated in your own head. <laughs> you know what I think about is the men that, okay, there was, there was some MGTOW who said, you need to understand MGTOW. And I, actually, the guy who is watching our dog and cat right now at our house is MGTOW. And I said, yeah, one of our good friends is MGTOW. He's like, no, no, he's not. No, like, well, why not? Because if, if your good friend was this, then you would think like I do. I, I mean, that, that's, that's not what he said. But it struck me that the men that want me to understand them really need a wife <laughs> to understand them. I have so many men yelling at me for transgressions of women, like, okay, I, maybe you do need to go call your mom or your dad and forgive them, <laughs> instead of coming to my YouTube channel to tell me how I'm the worst person ever. But these men would thrive, probably, if they could work on their, their history, and be the best person, if they had an amazing wife to listen to them and be like, yes, yes, oh, I understand, oh, that Jennifer Molesky, she's so poopy, you know, then, then they, would, they would be, it's like, it's like, it's like I'm every MGTOW's punching bag and wife, you know, and that's kind of how I see it. But, but I am a woman and I cannot think logically. So, so that I could be totally wrong. That's, that's, that's one of their, that's one of their shticks. Who created the movement? I think my dad. Uh huh. MGTOW is men going, men going their own way. Yeah. Okay. Why? Well, I mean, how, what do we do when we when I, I think it's a couple of different things. When you can't get what you want, what you think you deserve. I gotta go. When you, think, when you think that you can't get it, you get mad, and then you're like, well, then I don't want it anyway. And if you've been hurt by someone, you're like, I'm never gonna do it again. It's a psychological yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So I gotta go, but uh, I think Anthony's gonna take over now, right? Yeah. Give it up, give it up. <laughs> oh, I, was, I brought this up. I was gonna wear this the whole time. Anthony, I'm so sorry. <laughs> We could win this war. We can win this war? OK, well, joining us from Orlando, Florida, is the man in that clip, Anthony Dream Johnson, who says he wants to abolish feminism and make women great again. No, but it also crazy. says, with a trademark, make women great again. Full women are always great. Women great. Not great. Make women great again. But they're going to do a three-day seminar for women led by all men. <laughs> In mansplaining news, a three-day conference for women led by men hopes to make women great again. How the 22 convention will make you the greatest you ever. Raise your femininity by 500%. First of all, how is a man supposed to tell a woman how to be the ultimate woman? But women need to be taught how to be great again. Oh, not my yes, words. We do. Like how to land a husband, <gasps> how to lose weight, how to pop out a bunch of kids. Why do men think they need to fix the problems of women? Well, it says the world's ultimate event for women. In Orlando, Florida, that's going to be the scene of the crime. It's mansplaining palooza and say no to the toxic, bullying, feminist dogma. <laughs> Taught by men to make women great again.
Taking the stage now is the founder of the 22 convention. You're in for a treat, Mr. Anthony Dream Johnson. Anthony Dream Johnson. Anthony Dream Johnson. The first president of the manosphere. It's run by all men, which promises to, quote, make women great again. This course is guaranteed to raise your femininity by 500%. Together, we will make women great again. Excuse me, I'm mansplaining here. She said there's nothing...